Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, using this data set, we're gonna do uh, gene classification uh, with your phenotype, which is basically a trait. Basically guys, uh, there's a big class imbalance and there's so many classes. You're not gonna be using a classifier for this. I've tried them all. They're not accurate enough with and without the PCA. It doesn't matter. The highest it'll get is 60% and take forever to do it. Therefore, it's not accurate enough to use a classifier. Therefore, we're going to use a different method. Okay, guys. And guys, as you know, uh, for DNA testing, um, a lot of this is used for stuff like this. And then degrees as well when we get into it for multi-class. Okay, because as you guys know, it's not just ancestry that algorithms are being used to automate and solve problems popula and um, detect populations. It's not just this. It's also your traits. And guys, we're going to be using my DNA, and you guys can use your DNA as well. I'm going to show you guys how. Either uh, download it from whatever company, upload it into here, and uh, also upload this, which is going to be our data set. We're going to add PCA to it also. Although if you guys would don't want to do the PCA and you guys want to skip that, you guys can too. You guys don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, but you guys can if you want or do leave out the PCA. It's all up to you guys. Anyways, guys, um, we're also... Um, Okay, import these, read it with pandas. As you can see, we're going to have to drop a lot of columns. Do you know why we're going to have to drop a lot of columns? Because if you look at your DNA from a testing company, it's going to look just like this. And then there's no alleles, so you're going to have to drop this from yours too. So the RSD, the chromosome, and the position. Sometimes, guys, the position on DNA companies is also wrote off as the location. You can change that as well. And then the SMPRS is really the reference number. You guys can change that as well. RSID. Basically, it's the reference number to the cluster. Sometimes they have a different way of marking it up. And then you look at DF info. Okay, as you can see, we're going to need to do some encoding. Okay, and then there's my DNA, like I told you. Read it with the head. You're going to drop those two columns for that uh, test data frame where we're going to be making a prediction, which is going to be your DNA also. Okay, so encode and as type string both of the data frames. Okay, with the standard scaler, fit it, and here's PCA. You guys can skip this if you guys want, and you guys don't want to add those columns. Just keep in mind, if you don't, if you skip this part, you don't add the columns to it. Okay, as you can see, there's the columns from the first one on this index. We're going to merge it, and then uh, there's our new data frame. Fill in A0, you know, to get rid of the nons, and then there's the second one. Okay. And then there, there we go on that index. Merge. Okay. And the position. New 2, which is uh, the prediction, the prediction data frame. Okay, as you can see, traits. Um, that is uh, the 1173. It's the number of classes. And you guys can use that to look up certain traits also and to see whether they got any or not. And then the frequency. And then this is just a little exploratory analysis. 
You see, there's the trait and the length. Okay, and then the reason why we're going to use uh, the mini batch k-means is because the regular k-means takes too long. Just like data visualization of this prediction takes too long, which we're not going to do. We are going to put it in the data frame, and I'm going to show you some other things. However, if you guys want to go off and do this on your own and wait forever for the matplotlib or SNS, Feel free to do that too with the prediction. It works. It'll just take a long ass time. Okay. K means fit, new two. Predict, new two. There's the number of clusters we're going to pass for the parameter. And it random. And uh, remember, if you guys skip PCA, uh, then disregard. Although it would be ideal to add more columns to it. Okay, and in this range, we're going to get the number of elements in each cluster. And you guys can go through this individually. This is what I meant from analysis on your prediction. Now, guys, uh, the, the inverse transform function does not work on this. Otherwise, I would say inverse transform. Uh, but if you guys want to cross-reference, you guys can cross-reference the hard way, which is basically saving the original data frame, the CSV, and then uh, see uh, what it was encoded as, you know, and then go through each gene on your prediction and then cross-reference it that way. The, infor the inverse transform function did not work. Otherwise, that would save us a lot of trouble, wouldn't it? Anyways, guys, as you can see, um, there's our predicted trait in the data frame. You see? So we started off with just these three. And if you guys want to add alleles, you guys can add that too. Just merge it on here too. Although, uh, you might want to encode them if you were going to save them for later. Now, guys, if you guys ever find a data set with alleles, do not drop them. Those alleles probably will come in handy. And you may be able to use a classifier because it's got some more data frame. I mean, some more columns. Anyways, guys, um, if you're new to my channel, um, I've got another one for population clusters as well. So see my other video. See my other video for population clustering. I've actually got two of them. Where, uh, one where we uh, compare Korean to Estonian. One where I compare my DNA. And then, uh, and then I turn it into a web app. You know, population clusters. And then this cluster belongs to that. Anyways, guys, um, uh, like I told you, um, my channel's got nearly everything. So if you're here for the first time, there's probably something you need. Um, check out my other reinforcement learning videos. A lot of my... Uh, Stuff is more on the technical side than the data science side. By technical, I mean machine learning engineering. So check out the SageMaker pipeline videos, Google Cloud deployments. You name it, I got it. More on the technical side. I've even got database videos. Both uh, GCP, a big query, and um, AWS Redshift. Anyways, guys, um, my channel's got everything. Check it out. And uh, be sure to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. And also, uh, please share my videos with anyone who might need help with data science. Also, leave a comment down below if you want me to do a specific type of video. Your feedback helps. And uh, see some of my deep Q learning videos. See some of my other clustering videos like uh, color extraction and all kinds of stuff. Um, 
Also, uh, see some of my other videos for AI and ML web apps, convolutional neural networks. You name it, I got it. If you're here already, there's probably something else you need. I even got reinforcement learning for trading. Anyways, guys, um, hope you like the video. Stay tuned. Thank you. Bye.